we're going to go to Ephesians. We just got into chapter 3. And so, as we stand to read these seven verses, we're not standing on a religious event or some kind of religious practice. We stand because this is the mind of God. And when God speaks, we stand at attention. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. And evangelists can read verses 1 through 7. Now, we're not going to, I can honestly tell you, you know, I, I've been trying to, you know, do my studies on certain verses, but I can honestly say that I believe we're going to get stuck between 1 and 4. Maybe 1 and 2. <laughs> but Ephesians 3, we're going to read from 1 to 7. Amen. Uh, verses 1 reads. Yeah. When I think of all of this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the benefit of you Gentiles, assuming, by the way, that you know God gave me the special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles. As I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me. As you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now, by his Holy Spirit, he has revealed it to us, holy apostles and prophets. And this is God's plan. Jesus. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Yes, both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading his good news. Amen. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for, you know, just who you are. Thank you. I pray right now your name stays holy. I pray that you continue to teach us how to keep your name holy. Father God, I pray that you forgive us of anything and everything we said on our thought. I pray right now that you'll wash us, cleanse us, creating us clean hearts, renewing us right spirits. I pray right now for your will to be seen and done in our life. I pray for the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin, God's righteousness, and the coming judgment to lead and guide us into all truth, teach us truth. I pray that you rejuvenate bodies in Jesus' name, Lord. Overall, have your way. This is your house and your home. We trust you. We love you. You freely roam. You have your way in Jesus' name. Give us the message your people need to hear and allow us to articulate it as clearly as possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you take your seat, say two things. Say transform the culture. Can you say it with a little bit more life in you? Say transform the culture. And I want you to say this. It's going to be a little lengthy, but I want you to look somebody in the eyeball and say this. Because we're speaking the spirits instead of it, all right? We're speaking the people's spirits. I want you to say, obedience is the only way to show who you worship. Come on, say to somebody else. Say, obedience is the only way to show Worship. Worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to tell you this morning, the devil ain't coming after nothing else but your obedience. That's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, and guess what? And if you, some of us are succumbing, and you know, to the enemy's tactics by just sitting here playing into how tired we feel today. Wow. Because whatever we choose to obey is who we worship. God designed us to be the beings to worship him. In spirit and in truth. And guess what? If you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping demons and your flesh by default. That's right. Demons and your flesh by default. Every time you get a thought that contraries God's word, that's your, your worship. Because nine times out of ten, we obey what we're thinking. And because we're obeying what we're thinking, guess what it does? You know, it shows up in our actions. It shows up in our bodies. And if I was lying, some of y'all wouldn't be mad at people for saying, well, why you feel like that? Why you look like that? Why you, why you talking like that? Why you, just because I said it that way, I don't mean I felt that way. You do feel that way. It showed up in the way you said it. And it showed up in how you presented it. Because if you love God right, you would be too scared to hurt his people. Wow. You'd be too scared to succumb to what you want or what you feel like doing because you'd be too scared of God coming down your street. Amen. And I want to 
going to open up with this this morning because I'm going to play this weird video. I'm going to play this weird video soon, but I want to open up with this. G. Craig Lewis said this. I know that's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> uh, but he said this because, you know, uh, it, it, it just resonated, hit home for me. But he said, when the message on Sunday comes for your heart, because the word is coming to pierce and to cut it, you don't need to complain. You need to scream out, somebody pray for me. And see, we got to get to this place where the, our hearts are pierced, not out of offense, but so that our transformation can be seen. Your pierced heart linked to transformation. It links to your transformation because if your heart never changes, then we we'll never see why you believe. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. Here's why I'm saying this, and I want you to understand this, that the obedient people, whether that's you or somebody else you know, obedient people will never grow in a disobedient church. Wow. And disobedient people will never grow in an obedient church. Because the two have two different agendas and they're coming from two different sources. Wow. Yep. One is coming from a lifestyle developed by scripture and the other one is coming from a lifestyle filled with demons. And why am I saying it like this? Because once again, if you're not worshiping the true and living God, you're worshiping demons or your flesh by default. This is important. This is why some of us had the frustration that we had in certain places because you're trying to honor God but the house is not conditioned to honor God, so you're frustrated. Jesus. You're frustrated because you're not hitting against just what you see. You're hitting against another source, another spirit at play because somebody, whether it's the head, is disobedient. You can never sit here and change a house that chooses to obey disobedience. And this is why people leave church hurt. And I'm saying this because before you see this video, I want you to understand why I'm saying this. People leave church hurt because us as preachers are doing a poor job with explaining or apologizing the word of God. Apologizing me literally means explaining the word. Amen. We're doing a poor job. We're trying to make y'all feel good versus telling you why he's good and get comfortable with his results and not how you feel. Rather you sit here and you don't say a hallelujah, amen, it don't stop my mouth from speaking the word. Amen. And so this is where church is not conditioned off of a scream. Ha! You get what I'm saying? Because people are going to do it. You know how I many people are screaming and shouting and they're still going home lying and cussing and fighting and being weird? You know, your screams doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is when we now finish the sermon, said and go home and live out a transformation life. Live it out. You get what I'm saying? When you enter into his gates, did you come in with thanksgiving? Or did you leave out, you get what I'm saying? Or come in with your, your issues and leave out with your issues. Here's why this is important now, and some of y'all may call this a beating, but, but I'm going to call it just, just the word of God. It cuts. Shove it into a two-edged sword. I heard a report about a couple weeks ago some visitor came in here. And they came in here, and they said that somebody showed them an attitude. We're not doing that. Amen. And I'm sorry, you get what I'm saying? I'd rather, I'd rather preach to three people that are growing in God than have a whole house of demons. Yes. We're not going to do that. And rebellion is not going to take place here. Amen. We're going to shut it down on all cross the boards. Now, the Lord has showed us methods on how to do that. We're not going to embarrass people, you know what I mean, just to do, say, just because we got a position to do that. That's now, right. if you've been embarrassed yourself, that's on you. That's right. You know what I mean? If you try to interrupt the service, we're going to shut you down. You know, that ain't us. We're defending God. You just want to be weird. Yeah. But when people enter in here, they, they should see your love because it's not yours, it's God's. Yeah. They should receive your hugs and they should literally see, you know what I mean, the will of God being proven in your life. We should not have a report of somebody sitting here saying that somebody hurt them. And as a pastor, I would be weird to now allow it to continue, whether it was a leader or whether it was a late member or musician. We cannot have that in God's house. This is a hospital. Amen. 
Amen. And so now this is where we have to check ourselves. We're tired. Great. Amen. But at the end of the day, when you see somebody, you don't know what they went through to get here. Then shoot to the side, hug them and love them and give them Jesus. And when you do it that way, Jesus will work it out for you. Yeah. That's how it always happens. But don't you dare be weird. Because now you cause us to now sit here and have to shut that down. Yeah. You know what they just think? Because he's a pastor. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my godly biblical right. And anything that comes against, I hear you, Father. The knowledge of God, it is our job to shut down by the word of God. Amen. 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 And so, why is that important again? You see it? Oh, Lord. Oh, no, not the... <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, no. Not the kids, I don't know. We don't... We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. <laughs> We don't make it rain on strippers. We only reference one stripper. And that's the one that took off glory. To put on humanity. And then get put naked on a cross. To die for both you and me. The only stripper I'm in love with is Jesus. Oh, God. 
God. And this is the time that we have to challenge your ears. Do you want to feel good? People pick churches because they want to, I got to shout, I got to dance, I got, they got the proud side in my pocket. <laughs> then you go home, and then you know you wonder why nothing in your life resembles the Bible that's on your shelf. Wow. Because they now, the gimmick was to get you to come back. And now, how do I get people to come back if I'm in business? You gotta like my product. Wow. What? You gotta like it. And if you like my product, you'll come back and you'll keep buying. Although, some days we may have off service. You know what I mean? We may not have the presentation that you want. You'll still come back because I'm giving you what you want. Now the question should that that thing should have fuel question to you, you know what I mean? Are you coming to church for the right reasons? Are you coming to church for God? Or are you coming to church to, you know, for God to make you feel good? Because God will make you feel good. Talk about his goodness, yes. But now he said, talk about that man you don't want to let go. No. Not today, Jesus. Because at the end of the day, you know what I mean? We have to learn that most of us walk out the wrong version of God. We made God a genie. We made him what we want. And it's not the true and living God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I know this ain't going to get a lot of people hyped. Great. Because what we're going to do today is speak the spirits. Sidebar, can we just parenthetically pause here? And, you know, maybe Brother Christian can help us out. Sister Judy had a birthday yesterday. She turned 47. Can y'all say happy birthday to her? Yes, yes. Just wanted to put that out there. Here's where I'm going with this. Parents, we have to now, we have to be so proactive in the life of our kids that at the end of the day, that although they may be 8, 9, 10, we see past their age and see their spirits as maturing. This is why this may hurt some people today. Some people may not like it or agree with this, but this is just what I believe. As a, as a father, as a parent, we cannot encourage teen dating. Mm. And I'm going to tell you why I believe this. Because as a teen, those pivotal years were the years I really was trying to find identity, but I got hurt so bad that when I finally got into a relationship, it caused me to hurt other people. Because I didn't know how to handle that because somebody broke my heart. You see, what happens during those times, we're, the teenagers, they, as lovely say, they have adult bodies, right? But they got kid minds. So you mix the two together, you're gonna get a monster. Some days they're happy, sad. Like, why did you make that decision? Because they look grown, but they're thinking from a, a low place. So if you now encourage somebody that's got all these emotions everywhere to be with somebody, what happens is now, if that person is unstable, because they just they were nice to you, but you don't know how they really feel at home, you don't know their makeup at home, now they get next to your son and your daughter, and they break your son and your daughter's heart, where is that going? Most adults today, the ones that haven't been healed and delivered, are, are literally scarred from their teenage years. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because somebody broke their heart now and said back then, so now in church I don't trust nobody. Yeah. You don't trust nobody? Where did that come from? I know what God said, but I don't trust nobody because you put all your hat, eggs in the hat with Harry and he broke your heart at 16. Yeah. And so now you don't, know, you don't know what real love is. You're walking around with a, a broken shell. You get what I'm saying? No heart in you. No soul. No spirit. And so now because you do that, you get what I'm saying? You walk around hurting other people. You're desensitized to what the Bible says love is. God is love. And if you love God, you'll love his people. It doesn't matter if you're friends with him, you still love his people. You get what I'm saying? Anybody that has the image of God, you love. And what does love look like? We know that we may not be friends with him, but we pray for them, we show up for them, we do what we need to do. You got a got a call? Your brother called you, he talked to him in 20 years. If you got the coat, the challenge ain't for you to sit here and tell them, God's going to work it out. You have a coat. Give it to them. Oh, well, the Bible, you got to help me, man. I, I, I got issues with Brother Christian. He's my enemies. The Bible says love him past that. Love your enemies. Doesn't Jesus do that for us? All of us was an enemy 
enemies of God at one time. And because we was an enemy of God at one time, I think Evangelist Kira said it best. Even when we did not acknowledge him, he still was working on our behalf. Because that's love. that's love. And so we have to get there. And so I'm going to encourage parents, keep your eyes open for your kids. You know your kids because you know you. At your kid's age, you know what you was doing. And here's the thing. Why, why I truly, like I said, I'm going hard with this. Because we see some characteristics, and them two right there just this week, and we was like, wow. Love used to do that. We just like, we just start now as parents calling up. That's you. That is you and live. And then she said, that's you and JJ. Like, you know, you should be right. Here's the thing. If I can see what I used to do pre-Jesus, then now that shows me how much work I need to do in Jesus for them. Amen. 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 And so guess what? I know my son. He has that thing. He can walk into a room and people are just, oh, JJ. He'll get them girls and them doctors and all. Oh, JJ, come in, see JJ. We're going to get that right, yeah, handle on right now because that's gonna, he going to grow up being a monster. Walk in the room and then the little girl's on his side. Like, dad, I don't know who I'm with. Felicia, Talisha. He going to sound like DMX. Yeah, Felicia, Talisha. <laughs> like, what? No, the devil's a liar. We're going to cut that down now because if we don't, we're going to turn him to a monster. And so that's why we're getting with that because we want we, we want our next generation to be better than us. Yeah. To be better than us and then to show God's purpose in his will. I don't want another OJ in this world. I want, I want somebody that's going to be way better than me. Yeah. Especially if it's my seed. You get what I'm saying? I don't want him to grow up and know what it is not to have a parent or a father or somebody in their life. I'm going to be there through it all. You get what I'm saying? If I got to give him, you know me, my last, I'll give them my last, but I want to be there for it all because what we're doing is we're working towards the next generation. He and whatever he spits out in his future should not have to deal with what I dealt with because it ended with me. Do you see that? You get what I'm saying? And if you're not working like that as parents, you're going to now be the reason why you see these kids looting out there because they're looting and they're destroying public property for no reason. And their parents at home told them, I'm glad it ain't my kid. But your kid ain't home. Where is that? They're not home because you know where they are because you're not dealing with that thing inside of them. Amen. And so we have to, we have to now deal with that. One of the things that, and I, and I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, please write it down in your phone somewhere. This week, the Lord is calling us in at, to a church fast. Leading up to Sunday. So what we're going to do is you're going to pray and ask the Lord the method of your fast. If that means that if the Lord is telling you to come out of from food, to God be the glory. The Lord is saying come off of social media for the week, to God be the glory. The Lord is saying to you, don't eat sugar, to God be the glory. Whatever the Holy Spirit is leading you for the method, please pray and ask the Lord for that method. What we're praying for is this, leading up to Sunday. And here's why this is going to be important. We're, we're, Sunday we're celebrating four years beyond the service now I'm looking at the work we shouldn't operate as if we did in 2019 when we opened and we still shouldn't be operating as we did last year because what God is doing is setting us up for something else if you don't know and this is where I'm, I'm pulling on your spirits today we're in transition as a church I keep saying it over and over again because God is now he's pushing us to not just in building, but a different place in ministry. And we all have to operate as such. Amen. Amen. So we're praying for this. It's ten things. We're praying for oneness. We're praying for unity. We're praying for growth. Go down. Yeah. <laughs> we're praying for oneness, unity, growth, Souls to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
the Godhead to reign in totality in us individually, corporately as a church, and everything that concerns us. Repeat that one again. Yep. We're, we're praying for the Godhead to reign in totality, individually, corporately, and in every aspect of our life. Every aspect of our life. Then we're praying, and I say this with all humility, but I, I know I know the warfare. We're praying for pastor and the family because we're getting it hard. The en if the enemy can stop us, you get what I'm saying? He thinks that he's going to stop this. But he's not. Amen. And so I told y'all over and over again, I give my life up to serve God. Not just in word, but in deed. Somebody keep me here with a gun, I'll be the first one to jump in front of me. And because I give my life up to pastor, so I don't play with, with souls, and I don't want you playing to serve him. Amen. So please pray for us. Then we're praying for sound doctrine to continue to be taught and preached. We're praying for the fruits of the Spirit to be produced. We're praying for obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Praying for the fruits of the Spirit to be produced. Praying for obedience to the leading of the Spirit. And last but not least, we're going to be praying for the anointed from the anointed one to increase. So I'm going to go through one, the list one more time. Oneness, unity, growth, souls that come to the knowledge of the truth, the God here to reign in totality in us individually, corporately, and in every aspect that concerns us, praying for a pastor and a family, praying for sound doctrine to continue to be taught and preached, praying for the fruits of the Spirit to be produced, praying for obedience up to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and praying of that the anointed from the anointed one will increase. The anointed one is who? Jesus. Oh, say it like you respect it. Jesus. Amen. And here's what we're doing. So outside of individually praying, we're going to meet on Zoom at 730 each night. And we're going to pray this out together. And so the way we're going to conduct the Zoom call, the leaders is going to start us out in prayer, and then as the Spirit leads you, pray it out each night. We'll meet from 7 to about like 8, 15 or something like that, whatever whatever the Holy Spirit leads. But we, we, we have to come together and in unity and pray this thing out corporately. Sunday come, outside of a celebration, I'm looking for revival to happen. I'm looking for that spark to happen in this place, in this church. I'm looking for, we can know people gonna lead out, but I'm looking for God to sin in more. One thing my wife was praying today, it made so much sense, and we're still in the message. It made so much sense as, as we was coming to church. She said, Lord, we have to get to the place where we realize that people is the ministry. And so for us to stay away from people, there's no reason to do ministry. For, for those of us, I just want to be by myself, then you don't want to do ministry. You don't want to do nothing. There's nothing out here that we can do that don't involve people. And so people, yes, they're weird, they're crazy, nasty, or whatever you can throw out there, but the ministry still has to take place for their soul. Amen. 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 And so I want us to get into the mindset that whatever happens, we're praying for souls to transform. If they meet us, they should see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Period. That's all. And so this week is going to be crucial. Each night we're we'll sending out the Zoom link. Before you leave, make sure Mr. Lynn has all your info, phone numbers, or whatever. We're we'll sending out the Zoom links or whatever. And then, you know, we're meeting 730 each night, you know, and then going to as the Holy Spirit lead. Amen. Amen. But I'm asking for you to pray how to do this because 
It's one thing for people to say, I'm going to do it, and then tomorrow hits, and they'll be like, well, I forgot this and that. I need us to be intentional. You didn't forget to clock in. When it comes down to money, you don't forget. Johnny still owe you money from 1993. You remember. I wish I was lying, because when you start going through the lines, y'all be sitting there like, I re you know who all owe me? She, from the second grade, Elizabeth, I gave her a pencil, and she never gave it back. So if you can remember those things, let's remember the importance of why we work in, within salvation. I don't work to get saved. I work within it because I'm saved. Amen. Amen. And so as we meet, we want God's spirit to move. And so, I know it may seem like we're moving around and jumping around, but I need us to, to keep this in the forefront because where we're going, and this is for the leaders or whoever, we're looking for revival to start on Sunday, but we're looking for it to continue. And here's why. Because it shouldn't take you no longer five to six months to get a sermon or a, a prepare us an assignment together. No, this is real. This is real. Because if we're working daily, picking the word back in our hearts and our minds, there's no reason for God to be confused on what he wants you to say. This is real. Amen. If you're doing what you need to do daily, you know how we say, if you, got, if you, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. If you do what you need to do daily, there's no reason for, well, I just need time to prepare. No, that means that you're not doing what you need to do daily. Because with or without notes, the word is still here in my heart. And I still should be able to speak it, you get what I'm saying, as the Holy Spirit is leading. Amen. 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 We, we don't want no more, you know, it, just, it is what it is. We're in leadership. We have to now be with one accord, Amen. with one purpose. You get what I'm saying? We don't want no more weird members. Stay over the air and I still hear the devil's a liar. We want people that wants to train in righteousness. Amen. 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 Because we have a world that's dying and they can't postpone their funeral because of you. Amen. They cannot do They will not postpone their funeral. They're never satisfied and it causes them to now die because they don't understand what's going on. Sometimes that happens spiritually. Of course, all the time it's spiritual, but sometimes it shows up physical. Most people take their own life because they don't understand why they're here. And so I want us to, I want us to become the church of the living God that upholds the truth of God. Whether we have three people in here or whether it's a whole packed out house. Everybody has purpose. And guess what? We're going to pull it out of you. So we randomly just say, hey, Sister Rose, we need you to come up here and pray. If she's a true believer in Jesus Christ, she may have a little stage fright, but she should be able to say, well, I don't know. Lord, I just trust you to pray through me. Nobody should be rejecting prayer if you're a believer of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And what we're not going to do is, is prostitute anointings any longer. So you're not coming to church to look for a prophecy. Because all the time, God ain't using people to prophesy, but he uses word all the time. You got to come on. Amen. Amen. And so you, you got to get to the place where you come to church for God. Amen. Amen. And so we never sit here and, you know, hey, Lewis, God said, you need to understand and say, you know what? God sang through that song, and I know what he's telling me to do. God spoke through his word. I hear what he's saying. Amen. Shift our focus. We're still in the word, but I got to make sure that our worldview is intact. Our worldview as Christians is to see the world through scripture. We have to see every aspect of this world through scripture. And without that, your, your worldview is going to be fickle. God help us. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to sound weird or mean. But there's just because some of my family members may deal with homosexuality, that don't stop me from believing the truth of what God said about it. Amen. We love them, hug them, but when God provides the opportunity, here's what the Lord says, but I can guarantee you the reason why you want it because you're going contrary to God. You're not healed from who touched you. And 
you're not healed from your anger towards God. Because you're mad because he didn't change certain things. And so that's why you want to you live in open rebellion. And so why am I saying this? Because there's no avenue. I just use that as an example. But there's no avenue that your worldview should change. Because you should be seeing the world through scripture. Amen. 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 Altar call. Altar call. Say altar call. I want us to get comfortable with the Holy Spirit leading us in our altar call. And here's why. We messed up people for the longest. Give the preacher your hand and guide your heart. But it's nowhere to be found in scripture because that's not the way. Here, and I say that it's not the way because if I tell you, man, just care, give me your hand. She's going to give me her hand. Give God your heart. Well, take it, God. She just broke what we just been teaching in Ephesians. None of us can come to God by works. Lest any man should boast. So I can't work to get God no matter how much I have a passion for him. The Holy Spirit has to lead me to, to God through the knowledge of the truth, which is the gospel. And so this is where we have to learn how to start teaching right. So that now people can be converted right and we can now become the church of the living God. Amen? Amen. And so for all to call, you know what I mean? You won't hear us to tell you to repeat after us. You want to be safe? Say, Lord Jesus. She's going to do that out of obedience to me. Yeah, out of obedience. Out of obedience to me. Yeah. But her heart may say something different because she can say it out of desperation. Yeah. I just need God to pay my bills. Mm. But she'll never see the purpose in God. Mm. Do you see how that works? You get what I'm saying? So what we have to do is challenge people's hearts with the word. And if they want to respond to what they just heard, it is our job to direct them as Acts 2 says, Peter said, repent and believe. Because the word just showed you why you're separated from God. There's none of us got saved and sat here and said, oh, God didn't want me to deal with that. I never knew that I still had that. The word came forth and what happened? So we got convicted right where we were. That was the time that we cried out, Lord, forgive us. Yes. And then now, how we show faith, we walk in the thing that convicted us the first time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word convicted us, and so now we walk in conviction every day. So because of this, you said, lying is wrong, I got to work in lying. <laughs> you said, this is why I got to work this way. Because if I don't do that, then the question should be, am I safe right? God ain't trying to come and pay your bills before he's trying to clean your soul. I'm like, I'm teaching already. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I want, I'm trying to get you to get it. Because, I, I, because we can't be, we can't just be a church like this. That's hype because the drummer's playing. I got that bread in my pocket. I don't serve God to get bread. You get what I'm saying? Because the Bible tells me, and I'm, I'm in the scriptures right now, that we have been, that we're only building on a foundation that was laid for us because of laid this foundation and they were starving. Amen. They didn't have clothes. But we can benefit from salvation because Paul just read and said that God made the mysteries of the gospels known to him. And at one time it was already concealed. The Old Testament didn't know anything about Jesus. They just knew something was coming. Somebody was coming. But the New Testament reveals him not just in name but in qualities and attributes. And so we got to understand that, yes, we need to know how we were birthed, but we need to know how to stay built. We have to know how to stay built. Because without that, we're going to all now be bent over. I hear you, Tony Evans. I heard, I was listening to him today. He was talking about how the lady was bent over and she had an issue. And she said she, he said she can never see right because all she knew was ground level faith. My God. Because that's all she's seen was the ground. And because of that, it caused her now to now trust the God from the ground. Now, we can preach it any kind of way because the Bible says faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Right? But God didn't, but he didn't, he didn't create us to see him with a low view. Come on. He created us to keep us to have a high view in him because he gave us the word to always find him. Amen. Do you see that?
today. And so I'm saying that to say is, as we continue, we have to become the church of the living God. Amen. Amen. Over here, and I guess I'm going to deal with the first two verses. We out of here. Paul says, for this reason, I, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the Gentiles. Now, we can just sit here and just listen to how Paul is writing. Number one, it's what Paul is, is doing in chapter three, it's going to cause you to go back by default. No matter how many times you read it, because you need to understand what is he breaking up in his argument. Let's understand this. When the Bible was first given, it was not, it was not given to us in chapters and verses. Understand that. That was added almost 500 and some years ago. You get what I'm saying? Just for us to be able to navigate through the scriptures. Uh -huh. But when it was first written, it was a constant story. The narrative was not broke up. So you cannot read the Bible just because a new chapter starts and think that now what was saying in the previous chapter stopped. Do you see that? Yeah. Because if we do that, you're going to miss the, the connection of why the people are writing. See, these letters are being written not just to, you know, churches in uh, Ephesus. It was written to one church in Ephesus for them to continue out, you know, and have a clear thought on how to find God. And so if we get to this place to understand that we can't break it up, you get what I'm saying? It is one text, you know what I mean? It'll help us bring understanding. He's saying for this reason, what is the reason? Back up to verse chapter 2, verse 19. Evangelist, read verse from 19 down to the close of the chapter. Verse 19 reads, So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Amen. So what Paul is dealing with, he's saying for, in chapter 3, verse 1, for this reason, he's taking them back because Gentiles understand you was never a part of the reasons according to the Jewish religion or tradition. And so I want you to know for this reason, you have now been brought into, you get what I'm saying, the things of God. Because now, although you was excluded at one time, you're now included in the foundation that God allowed the apostles and the prophets to, to lay. And so now you didn't work for Gentiles, but you're now included in it. And here's why this is important, because what Paul, what Paul is talking about and how he's leading them, then it should be it should bring a, an example or an image in our mind that there's nobody in the church that should be excluded. From the babies to the little old ladies, everybody get the same word. But guess what? None of us work to get Jesus, which literally means the Holy Spirit was drawing us to him to open our eyes so that we can see him. You know, as Luke 24 say, open our hearts for us to receive him. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Because how many of us read the Bible and what it said, and we knew what it said, but we, you know, as far as words, but we didn't know what it said in Revelation because we didn't have the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit had to open our eyes to Revelation for us to see the glory of Jesus. Do you see that? And so now because of that, Paul is literally saying for this reason, the I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, I like how Peter and Paul and John and them writes because they, let, they show you their stance. I'm a prisoner. I'm a bond servant. I'm literally locked up in Jesus. And I can't come out of it even if I paid him to let me go because his grace is too irresistible to let go. Do you see that? So he continues to have this plight that I choose to be a, a bond servant or a prisoner of Jesus. Romans tells us that we're all now slaves of righteousness after salvation, which means that you choose to now lock up your flesh on purpose. On purpose. I want to cuss Minister Lynn out because she stepped on my toe. Bite my flesh. That's my flesh. I got to lock it up. And let, let, let my flesh know that I got to bring you a subjected to the word of God. Because the Bible says in Ephesians, and we're going to get there, let no corrupt proceed out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? I can't curse if I wanted to because there's something that I'm chained to. God, I hear you. I'm chained. 
us a symbol. He gave us that. He gave us this this symbol with his body was once being on it, and because his body was once on it, it shows us we don't preach the cross right. How much you need to put your body on that cross? I want to have sex, but my body is nailed. Do you see that? My body is nailed because the Bible says I can't do it outside of marriage. So Lord, speed up that. Find a shortcut now because you didn't get a shortcut to salvation. 
Wow. Do you see that? Wow. You get what I'm saying? Because, yes, we all like nice things. Elder Marv was short last week. He had a whole suit on. Going in like, step it in, Jesus. You know, he was there. But at the end of the day, he shouldn't be worried, worried about the suit to that he can't do ministry when it comes down to the prayer. Do you see that? The jacket should come off and say, Lord, if I got to tarry with this person all night long, I'm doing it for their soul. Not, not trying to figure out how to preserve a suit. Do you see that? Man, now that the church people, I can't leave this going around. Church people still, they ain't delivered. You know how we are. Now, I can't leave my cell phone there. The second you misplace your phone, somebody stole it. I knew these people wasn't saved. <laughs> you know how we are. We start going into that stuff. But now we make it God on the phone and we miss that a person still need deliverance if they still steal it. So now that, that could be a job. That could be a way God is trying to open our eyes and say, look, look what's among them or in you or mixed around you. Because the Bible says we're not ignorant to the devil's devices. And it also says, know them that labor among you. Yes. So if things are coming up missing, it's our job to expose. All right, now, this is the last time somebody's going to steal my iPhone. Yeah. I know it's in the house. I'm everybody getting metal detector check. <laughs> we can't do that. And I guarantee you to stop because now everybody's going to be too conscious to steal because it's out there. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. So Paul is saying, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ for the sake of you Gentiles. I choose to be bound up in Christ for your sake. For your sake. Which literally means that I choose to be an example for you to glean from. So that people can see what it looks like to be saved. Do you see that? We've seen the progress and I'm using her as an example of EK. You know, we've seen her coming up and how she, she had to forfeit her holy hands unto the Lord. She turned into golden gloves and and it was like, okay, Lord, I ain't boxing no more. I just sent her a video, you know, because I was like, this is how it was inside her first years of salvation. She was riding down on the street, look, blasting her music. Her song at the time was, you know my name. She was going in. She had blasted that joint and be stunned by it. Then somebody cut her off. Will you blah, 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 blah. Help me, Jesus. They didn't took me out of the spirit. See? And then she had to come in and tell her, I didn't cuss them out again. I'm sorry, Lord. I didn't mess up. All of us had that story. Yes, sir. That you get saved, and because now you're going against the grain, there's still something else in you that the Lord is showing you to pray about. Yeah. Now, if that is good for you, then it has to make sense why, once you become a master in it, not saying that, that you can own it or you're above it, but basically you know how to you know keep that thing in check. You have to be an example to the ones that were, once was where you are. That makes sense? Yeah. So I'm not walking around because I'm a pastor. Oh, don't touch me. You know how these dudes, man, it irks my soul. They walk around. I can't touch. I can't mingle in front of the people. Oh, Jesus, when I'm done preaching, don't you touch me. I haven't extended it to the Father. Who are you? Who are you? To the, and I'll tell you, when we was coming, I used to be so bad. All rise. Pastor's coming down. <laughs> Like what? Like what is this about? Then they get on a the pulpit. Mm. You see, this is why I love being at home. We don't have nasty podiums. You know, we don't have hey, brother. I get it. The Lord is delivering me from OCD, so I get it. But at the end of the day, when the ministry is involved, I have preached in living rooms and the power of God fell. I have preached in bathrooms, literally. You get what I'm saying? It's a bathroom here and a living room right there. And we like, hey, turn on the sink in the kitchen so they can hear this. Because what it was, what it was about wasn't it wasn't about the formalities. It was about the will of God. Do you understand that? So we can't just be so, you know, I don't know what to call it, high-minded, that we forget where we once was. And you was a project. I don't know how many times God had to reconvene another meeting. Okay, heaven. We gotta talk again about EK once again. She's in the courtroom line again. Oh, oh, Jesus help us. Because now, you get what I'm saying? We got so heavily minded where we forgot. Do not forget where God brought you from. Amen. 
because somebody else is looking for you. They should not go back to him. Nobody should come in here and see you. They should see Jesus in you. Do you see them? God bless you. I'm tired. I got to go. I'm a little tired. This is called real kindness. Not nice. Nice is going to lie to you. Kindness is going to tell you the truth. I'm a little tired. I got to go, though. Y'all pray for me. Not sitting here saying, oh, no, keep on talking. I got all this strength in the world. And sitting here lying in your head like, I just wish they shut up. That's what church people do. But we're looking for kingdom people. Like, you know what? Can we, can we discuss, discuss this on Monday? I am tired, man. I just preach. I just want to chill out. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. True, because now, if I allow you to talk to me, what I'm going to do is, and mess up, I'm going to give you my humanity. Because yep. yeah. you're going to see the annoyance on me. You get what I'm saying? Why you're trying to talk to me about spiritual things. Yes. Yes. Do you see that? When we got to learn how to now tell the truth. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. God, I want to go home. I told my professor yesterday, I was like, look, I know this stuff is due today, but it's 8 o'clock. I ain't getting this stuff in. Can you pick it to Monday? And I'm like, Lord, I thought the class had to fail because I'm tired. And thank God he was like today, he's like, no, you can turn it in on Monday. I see you working hard. See, tell the truth. Tell the truth. But this is how we get God's results. Last verse. He says, indeed, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you. Now, real quick, to understand God's grace, before we get to stewardship, you got to deal with the attributes of grace. Because now grace has a face. Understand this. And grace is a person. But you'll never understand why the Bible tells us that we have grace in God. Because if you don't deal with the attributes. So here, here's, here's the attributes of grace. When you look at grace, you see unmerited favor. And we're not dealing with just one side of the Bible. We're dealing with the entire Bible. Psalms 84 and 11 shows us this. You're dealing with beauty. John 14, 41 tells us this. You're dealing with irresistible. It's, grace is irresistible. John 6, 37 and 40 shows us this. Grace is a free gift. And so Romans 6, 23 shows us this after it deals with sin. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is what? And then you, grace is acceptance. Romans 10, 9. Grace is a general gift. John 3, 16. A, 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 grace is loving kindness and tender mercy. Psalms 25, 4 and 7. And so now when you start looking at the attributes of what grace is, who's the face? Jesus. Jesus. God has given us grace in his son so that now we can obtain something that we can't pay for. But at the end of the day, we can now stay built in his son to get the benefits of why we believe in his son. And so now what Paul is saying here that we indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace. That's revert worded. You have heard the stewardship of God's son. God's son, which is given to me for you. I received salvation before Evangelist Karen received salvation so that God had to deal with my heart so I can talk to her right. Do you see that? But check this out. We can't skip over the very important verse, a word in this verse. He said, for indeed you have heard of the stewardship. See, we want to skip over stewardship and get to Jesus when you got to be a good steward of Jesus. Which literally means you got to be a good manager of how you now grow in Jesus. You can't grow in Jesus from how you want Jesus to be. You can only grow in Jesus from the way the knowledge of the truth said he is. And so now to be a good steward of Jesus is to work on your lying ways even though you still are tempted to lie. It's to say that I, in the middle of a lie, I know I'm lying, but Father, the Holy Spirit just convicted me. Let me, Father, forgive me. I just lied. Give me the courage now to tell the truth. Come on. In the midst of a lie, Lord, I fornicated last night and it felt good, but it's wrong. It's because we gotta be real. If sin didn't feel good, none of us would desire it. So don't get deep and wonderful and act like, yo, man, I'm, he's 
said it felt good. Yeah, that's why you keep doing it. Because it felt good. But if you got to deal with the desire that makes you crave it because it's not good, it's deceiving. Because what sin does is, outside of producing death, it death is literally means separation. It causes you to be separated from God so it can pounce on you so that you can die prematurely, spiritually, and physically. Because we don't look like what we've been through, not because, God, we did everything right. It's simply because we dealt with the thing that was killing us. And what was killing us was sin. It was destroying, and so we started to look like it. You look stressed. I know because I'm stressed. I'm tired. I don't know what I'm going to do. Because you still ain't dealing with the sin. The Bible says worry is a sin. Amen. Why are you pulling your hair out when he has the answer? Amen. I could have sat here and been stressed this weekend. I'm a page musician, Lord. And the Lord said, you got 10 iPhones in this, in this house. Go sell them. You're right. I ain't going to lie to the people. I ain't going to sit here. The Lord is saying, give a thousand dollars. You know how many people be? God said, give a thousand. No, we're going to tell the truth. The money is short this week. We need to pay them. How we can do? I can give up these old iPhones. And guess what? He, he, he gave us the money. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? And you can't be ashamed that's right. to talk about where you are because that's to be ashamed of Christ. I'm not a good steward if I lie. Wow. If I act like I'm bigger than where I am, I'm a liar. Right. But we're not saying that this is going to guilt trip you. We're just talking about the gracious gift that God has given us. And because he's given us his grace, you know, which is his son, we know how to tell the truth now. And so we have to get to that place where we understand that you cannot show people Jesus. You can't show people Jesus and you're not a good steward of him if you're not working in him. You're a liar and a deceiver. And you're constantly hurting people because you choose to do nothing. Please don't have an excuse. I'm done. Please don't have an excuse any longer to say, my life is weird and it's horrible. I want Jesus to pull me out. But you do nothing to draw an eye to the, or obey the leading of the Holy Spirit to get you to Christ. I don't feel like reading. Then that's why you're going to stay where you are. I don't feel like praying. That's why you're going to stay where you are. My mind is messed up. That's why you're going to stay where you are. Because to be a good sword is to fight past how you feel to get to his will. Your worst enemy sometimes is going to be you. It's going to be you. And no, we don't like it all the time. Because we think we're good sometimes. We do, all of us. But God has to remind us there's no good thing in that flesh. If he removed his spirit from you, you will be what you see. And so as we stand,